If you want to round a number to the nearest hundred, you actually have to look at the tens place to help you to decide whether to round up or round down. I like to underline the place I'm rounding to, the hundreds place, and draw an arrow to the place that will tell me whether to round up or round down, the tens place. You always look one place to the right of the place that you want to round to. So in this case, we're rounding to the nearest hundred. So we'll have to look at the place to the right of the hundreds, which is the tens. The same rule applies when rounding to the hundreds place as it does when we round to the tens. Five is the key number. If it's five or higher, you round up. Four or lower, you round down. You round the number in the hundreds place and make the numbers in the ones and the tens places zeros. Let's take a look at a real life situation that requires rounding and see how our rounding to the nearest hundred skills can come in handy. This park ranger wants to record how many people visited these national landmarks by rounding up to the nearest hundred. Let's help her by rounding. First, we'll check out Mount Rushmore, one of my favorite landmarks. According to the data, 175 people have visited Mount Rushmore. Now, let's round that number to the nearest hundred. We'll use the strategy of underlining the hundreds place and drawing an arrow to the tens place so we know what numbers we have to look at. I see a seven in the tens place. I know if it's five or higher, we have to round up. The one in the hundreds place is underlined, so we'll have to round the 100 up to 200. When rounding to the hundreds place, the numbers in the tens and ones places become zeros. I'll leave you with a challenge. I want you to help the ranger round the next two landmarks visitors to the nearest hundred. I'll give you some time to think, but if you need more time, you can pause the video and answer when you're ready. Okay, here's the answer. Old Faithful saw 871 visitors. So we'll use the strategy of underlining the hundreds place and drawing an arrow to the tens place so we know what numbers we have to look at. I see a seven in the tens place. I know if it's five or higher, we have to round up. The eight in the hundreds place is underlined, so we have to round up the 800 to 900. When rounding to the hundreds place, the numbers in the tens place and ones place become zeros. The Grand Canyon saw 963 visitors. We'll use the strategy of underlining the hundreds place and drawing an arrow to the tens place again. I see a six in the tens place. I know if it's five or higher, we have to round up. The nine in the hundreds place is underlined, so we have to round up the 900 to 1,000 because after 900, we have to change to thousands. When rounding to the hundreds place, and we have to round up to a thousands, the numbers in the hundreds, tens, and ones place become zeros. Remember to look at the place to the right of the place you want to round to, and round up if you see a five or higher. Thanks for watching, boys and girls. See you next time. When we want to round a number to the nearest hundred, you have to look at the tens place to help you to decide to round up or down. I like to underline the place I'm rounding to, the hundreds place, and draw an arrow to the place that will tell me whether to round up or down, the tens place. You always look one place to the right of the place you want to round to. So in this case, we're rounding to the nearest hundred, so we'll have to look at the place to the right of the hundreds, which is the tens. The same rule applies when rounding to the hundreds place as it does for rounding to the tens place. Five is the key number. If it's five or higher, you round up. But if it's four or lower, you have to round down. You round the number in the hundreds place and make the numbers in the ones and the tens places zeros. Let's take a look at a real life situation that requires rounding and see how our rounding to the nearest hundred skills can come in handy. This park ranger wants to record how many people visited these landmarks by rounding up to the nearest hundred. Let's help her by rounding. 
First, we'll check out the Washington Monument, one of my favorite landmarks. According to the data, 936 people have visited the Washington Monument. Now, let's round this number to the nearest hundred. We'll use the strategy of underlining the hundreds place and drawing an arrow to the tens place so we know what numbers we have to look at. I see a three in the tens place. I know if it's four or lower, we have to round down. The nine in the hundreds place is underlined, so we have to round down the 936 to 900. When rounding to the hundreds place, the numbers in the tens and ones places become zeros. I'll leave you with a challenge. I want you to help the ranger round the next two landmarks visitors to the nearest hundred. I'll give you some time to think, but if you need some more time, you can pause the video and answer when you're ready. Okay, here's the answer. The Jefferson Memorial saw 249 visitors, so we're going to round 249 to the nearest hundred place. We'll use the strategy of underlining the hundredth place and drawing an arrow to the tens place so we know what numbers we have to look at. I see a four in the tens place. I know if it's a four or lower, we have to round down. The two in the hundredth place is underlined, so we have to round down the 249 to 200. When rounding to the hundredth place, the numbers in the tens and the ones place become zeros. The Lincoln Memorial saw 817 visitors. We'll reuse the strategy of underlining the hundredth place and drawing an arrow to the tens place so we know what numbers we have to look at. I see a one in the tens place. I know if it's four or lower, we have to round down. The 8 in the hundreds place is underlined, so we have to round down from 817 to 800. Remember to look at the place of the right of the place that you want to round to, and round down if you see a 4 or lower. Thanks for watching, boys and girls. We'll see you next time. want to round a number to the nearest 10 or 100, we have to look at the place to the right to help you to decide whether to round up or down. I like to underline the place I'm rounding to and draw an arrow to the place that will tell me whether to round up or down. You always look one place to the right of the place that you want to round to. Even though both of these numbers have 37 in them, you'll see that we're going to round them differently because we are rounding 137 to the nearest 100 and 37 to the nearest 10. The same rule still applies for rounding to the hundreds place as it does for rounding to the tens. Five is the key number. If it's five or higher, you round up. But if it's four or lower, you have to round down. For 137, since we're rounding to the hundreds, we'll have to look at the number in the tens place. The three in the tens place tells us to round down. We'll round 137 down to 100. You round the number in the hundreds place and make the numbers in the ones and tens places zeros. But for 37, since we're only rounding to the tens, we'll have to look at the number in the ones place. Since that number is a seven, we're gonna round up because seven is greater than five. We'll round 37 up to 40. You round the number in the tens place and make the number in the ones place a zero. Let's take a look at a real life situation that requires rounding and see how our rounding to the nearest 10 and 100 skills can come in handy. These kids want to see how many fruits and vegetables their class has eaten this week. Let's help the kids figure this out quicker by rounding. First, we'll round the fruits eaten this week. According to the data, 443 pieces of fruit were eaten this week. Now, let's round this number to the nearest hundred. 
We'll use the strategy of underlining the hundreds place and drawing an arrow to the tens place so we know what numbers we have to look at. I see a four in the tens place. I know if it's four or lower, we have to round down. The four in the hundreds place is underlined, so we have to round the four in the hundreds place to 400. When rounding to the hundreds place, the number in the tens and ones place becomes zeros. Now I know about 400 pieces of fruit were eaten this week. Next, who we'll round the vegetables eaten this week? According to the data, 29 vegetables were eaten this week by kids. Man, these kids need to eat more veggies. Now, let's round this number to the nearest 10. We'll use the strategy of underlining the tens place and drawing an arrow to the ones place so we know what numbers we have to look at. I see a nine in the ones place. I know if it's five or higher, we have to round up. The two in the tens place is underlined, so we have to round the two in the tens to three tens. When rounding to the tens place, the number in the ones place becomes a zero. Now I know the kids only ate about 30 vegetables this week. I'll leave you with a challenge. I want you to help the kids round the next two types of food one kid eats a day to the nearest hundred and ten. I'll give you some time to think, but if you need more time, you can pause the video and answer when you're ready. Okay, here's the answer. We had to round the amount of protein one kid eats a day to the nearest hundred and round the amount of grains one kid eats a day to the nearest ten. The amount of protein one kid eats a day is 154 grams. I see a 5 in the tens place. I know if it's 5 or higher, we have to round up. The 1 in the hundreds place is underlined, so we have to round up the 100 to 200. So each kid eats about 200 grams of protein a day. The amount of grains one kid from the class eats a day is 81 grams. I see a one in the ones place. I know if it's four or lower, we have to round down. The eight in the tens place is underlined, so we have to round the eight tens down to 80. So each kid eats about 80 grams of grains a day. Remember to look at the place to the right of the place you want to round to. And if you see a five or higher, round up. And if you see a four or lower, round down. Thanks for watching, boys and girls. We'll see you next time. Subscribe to our channel to stay updated on new videos. Find links to our apps in the comments below.